came back here with your tail between your legs, you said you'd try and make another go of our marriage. Now you're back to being the same childish, irresponsible person I've lived with for years. Well, what are you talking about? Every time something goes wrong, you switch off. You start coming home late. You go to the pub with your mates. You develop a sudden interest in TV. You even read the papers. Anything, any damn thing to stop you thinking about the problem. Well, we have a problem, David. Our son is going the best way to ruin his future. And you've got to do something about it. Because if you don't, I'm telling you now, you may just as well have stayed with Patricia Hamilton. Oh, I've had a wonderful day, Daddy. I can't believe all the changes. I expect to see you back for the opening. When will it be? Depends on how the last stage goes. We've had a hell of a lot of trouble getting materials. Oh, roughly. Mm, a month. Mm. If you get that job in Melbourne, you'll miss it. I'd really like you to be here. Why don't you stay on with me, or your mother, until it's over? Oh, you're like a stuck record. Whatever job I take, I'll make it, I promise. Is that my favourite marble cake? Don't I always make you one? <laughs> Jill said she had a great time at the CWA meeting last night. Oh, just wanted to show what we did. There's a lot more to it than a few odd women getting together for a chinwag. And what they think about the news? Wayne's engagement. Oh, I, uh, I only told a few, of course, it being unofficial yeah. and all. I'll, uh, I'll call the others before I pour. <laughs> Wayne and Jill had better go through with it, or the CWA will string her up for having them on. <laughs> it's a nice night. Why don't we take that out to the veranda? Okay, good idea. You go ahead. I've got a call to make. Don't bother moving. We're coming out. Mm. I'll keep eating. <coughs> Trisha Hamilton. It's Gordon. I'll go into the study. Hold on. Won't be a minute. You think you can be ready to go by eight tomorrow? The quicker I'm out of that place, the better. Aunty Barb's been ignoring me since last night. Are you going to have a talk to her before you leave? Why bother? She's a pain in the neck. Well, oh, I don't understand people who can't accept it when you say you're sorry. Ah, oh, well, won't be any worries at Wombai. Hope not. Oh, thanks, Vic. I'll see you in the morning, then. Bye. I was too scared to turn the telly back on. <laughs> I called Vic. He, I invited him over for tomorrow morning. said. Well, I'll try. Honest. I hope so, David. Make this super simple summer chicken and salad. Or a delicious ice cream dish. Is this a great dessert or what? And millions throw it away every day, then waste money buying it back. Knowing what it is could save you heaps. Set our homes and gardens tonight. Excuse me, sir. Are you the famous Colgate 360? I can. There's obviously no point in approaching Kevin till he calms down. It helps, though, knowing that you'll be trying your hardest once you think the time is right. You can count on it. I'll have another cup, thanks, Lynn. At least you can set Muriel's uh, mind. Ah! <coughs> Bloody kids! <laughs> what the hell do you think you're up to? Gotcha! Oh. 
Oh, yes, there you go. I do. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Never grew up. That's my trouble. Mm. You'll be staying here, will you? Oh, if they're lucky. No, I'm going to have to stay with Mum and Dad. Yes, well, I'd better be running along. Uh, nice to meet you again. See ya. And thanks very much for the talk. Bye. Hey. Let me look at you. Hey, you've lost weight. You eat mining camp food. See how you go. Oh, Mum and me, you'll soon fatten you up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm starving. Oh, sorry about the mess. Oh, I can always scare you. Remember we were kids. Remember the time I put that whacking great spider in the loop? It's a small matter of it being 15 years later. Why should that make any difference? Oh. Ah! <laughs> Are you still driving that heap of junk? Oh, I couldn't do that old goody. <laughs> oh, before I forget, the 50 bucks I borrowed from you before I went up north. Better late yeah. than never. <laughs> you, uh, you working today? <laughs> no. Nullabor wasn't too kind on the old girl. I was uh, wondering if you could have a look at it for me. How long do you think you'll be staying? Uh, till I get bored. I reckon you can make good money in Queensland. I might go up there next. <coughs> oh, oh, give us the bad news. Bad news, Cobber? <laughs> it's a rust bucket. Police picked you up, you'll go for a ride. No, I have to catch me first. Yeah. Is it going to cost anything? That's what I want to know. A couple hundred bucks. <laughs> No, I fixed it. Hey, good on ya. Send us the bill, might get round to it in a couple of years. Yeah, what's new? That's how long it took you to pay back the 50. Tell you what, we'll buy your beer, we'll call it quits. Ah, uh, sorry. It's my one day off for a couple of weeks and I'm going to take Beryl into town and borrow a new dress. What have you done to him, sis? I don't know. You don't have to, really. Okay, okay, look, I tell you what, you two go into town, I'll stay here and have a sleep, and you can bring the beer home. OK? Got to look pretty for your Uncle John, don't you? Leave that poor thing alone. What's up with you? You've been grumpy since last night. I just think it's stupid having a cat running about with a bow around its neck, that's all. I thought you'd be happy getting extra help around the place. What did I say? You get it. Look. Why don't you use your chair for a while? You've been on those all morning. You don't want to overdo it. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. If you don't watch it, tie a bow around your neck and tighten it. It's not getting any cheaper. Still, we've got a few bookings already. I'll be able to concentrate on that side of it once John's here. I won't have to run you around so much. Any news on that timber order this morning? Ah, uh, no. Been thinking, Dad. I reckon John's wasting his time down here. We've got plenty of men and I'm getting around better now. I haven't used the chair all morning. The doctor warned you about being too cocky too soon. You've got a long time to go yet before you're right. That's the whole purpose of having John down here. He'll be able to do the things you can't. Besides, he knows the place and he's a damn good worker. That'll be them now. You coming out? No, I'll be coming in here. I'll take the weight off your feet then. We were driving along at about a hundred and suddenly there's a cow in the middle of the road. It's lucky we weren't killed. We ended up in a ditch and had to get a farmer to haul us out with his tractor. <laughs> Last time I drive with her. Blame we ever left the goat open so the cow could get out. It wasn't the cow who was speeding. Mm. Anyway, we're here now, so what does it matter? Um, mine's very weak. Could I have some more gin? Thanks, Rosie. Well, I can't wait to start work. We can't wait to have you start. Leave me free to get on with all that paperwork over there. As soon as I've unpacked, I'm all yours. I'll do that. Always have. I'll do my own thanks. Have we got time for a walk before lunch? Rosie? Not too far. After being cooped up in the car for so long, I feel like stretching my legs. All right? If you like, we can talk over lunch. <laughs> uh, we'll walk down the stable, see how they're going. You'll be surprised. Oh, I can't see Rosie taking her to a CWA meeting. It's beautiful. Did you have to be so rude to Rosie? Was I? The way you ordered her about. Well, that's her job, isn't it? To do what people tell her? She's not a servant. She lives here. Not that you shouldn't be polite to servants, too. 
She's been here for nearly 30 years. It's not too hard to say please and thank you. All right. If it makes you happy. I'll even let her unpack for me. Your problem is you're not switched on to other people. Well, that's the pot calling the kettle black. Keep your eyes open. You'll see what I mean. It's on the list. These two strangers have already won 400 grand. Now, how far will they go? Characters on The Muppet Show. How many? I'll get it. Hi. Hi. How are you? Oh. <laughs> mm. oh. Nice to see you, Patricia. I told Angela you were coming, stopped her going out on a final shopping binge. <laughs> well, I have to leave you two alone, I'm afraid. Now that John's gone, Alan Pascoe keeps ringing me with all his problems. It's Gordon's fault for taking so many men to Mumbai. Hope I make it back before you go. So do I. Bye-bye, darling. Bye. Come through. Mm -hmm. Would you like a drink? Something cool and soft, please. <laughs> I heard you're heading down to Melbourne to become a career girl. <laughs> Anyone will give me a job. Oh, they're mad if they don't. Uh, what sort of thing do you think you'll be going after? What do you do while you're down here? Oh, I get bored, mostly. Hoping for a job when the place opens up. Wayne promised he'd find me something. Independent type, are you? Mm. Well, I don't know why you bother. I'd just sit back and enjoy it while I had the chance. I like earning my keep. Mm. That explains why you didn't get him to set you up in something better than that pokey little bed sit. Enjoy your ride. Why doesn't Wayne like John? Oh, he doesn't dislike him. Well, it's not the feeling I got over lunch. You're his girlfriend, I thought you might know. Well, he's tired today, he's been overdoing it. But he and John are friends. It's sort of. <laughs> he gave him a pretty hard time to start with. He's over that now. What was the problem? Why all the questions? Just curious. I don't know what the problem was. He probably just didn't like him. Anyway, he's changed his ideas on a lot of things since the accident. Well, I'll see you when I get back then. Mm. <laughs> Young John ought to have his head red. That one's trouble, if you ask me. Well, apart from her looks, I don't know what he sees in her. Oh, he's like all young fellas can't see past a pretty face. Still, you can't tell them. They've got to find out the hard way. Mm. G'day. Wonder when you turn up. It's been a problem. What now? Another hold up with the materials for the indoor arena. Mal just found out. That's all we need. Yeah. You want me to get onto it for you? If you could, please. Drive me back home, I'll do it. I want to talk to Mal first. Well, let him drive me then. Earn his pay. All right with you, John? Sure. Uh, what do you want me to do after? I'll stay with Wayne. He may have to go into town. We're going to sit here all day. Keep your shirt on. See ya. Work's not all beer and skittles, you know. Oh, I know that from the first two jobs I had. OK. So you've given me the yarn you're spinning everyone else. Now, what about the real reason? <laughs> it is the real reason. This old thing can sniff a cover up a mile away, and these have seen proof. All right, I am still jealous. But John seems to have sorted it out, and I haven't. So you're scurrying back to Melbourne? Well, I promised Beryl I would if it started to get to me. Other than that, you, you might consider staying a little longer? D Daddy was on at me about it yesterday, and I, and I really wanted to say yes. I'm not lying about the job. I'd really like to have one. I mean, sitting around here is driving me nuts. I have to go back to Melbourne, don't I? You know what you're suffering from? The same as most of us. Prue is a pain in the proverbial. <laughs> I don't like her and Jill doesn't. No, you're not jealous. You've just joined the club. Oh, I wish I could be sure. Make sure. She's not going to last too long. Johnny's far too smart not to wake up to her sooner or later. Hang around. See how you feel about the next one. Maybe even see if you can find someone for yourself. 
It's too important a problem to ignore. Oh, it's, it's, it's not just that. It's, it's the job, too. Mm. Uh, some people actually do work in Sydney, you know. <laughs> I just thought it'd be easier down there. Uh -huh. The easy way out. Give it a go. It's important you sort it out for your own peace of mind. Steve Martin, Martin Short, Diane Keaton, and Eugene Levy for the first time in high definition. It will be like mind. Well, Fiona convinced me it's just as easy to get jobs up here as it is in Melbourne. I could have told you that. I know the perfect thing for you. Poor Alan Pascoe's really bogged down at the start. He could do with some help in the office. I can find my own job, Mother. I'm not trying to interfere, really. He was complaining about it while I was there. Oh, I'll see. Oh, don't be so damn proud. Go and see Alan if you don't believe me. I'm telling you now, he's not the sort of man who'd hire somebody just because they were the boss's daughter. Oh, I'll think about it. But first, I'd better ring Melbourne. Let them know I won't be back for a while. Won't be long. Well, the least I can say is thank you. Don't mention it. How did you do it? I talked to her. Wake up, black up next time. <laughs> oh, sorry, I must have the wrong number. Who'd you want to talk to? David or Beryl. Uh, not here. Can I give him a message? Oh, just say Angela called. Who am I speaking to? Rob. I'll make sure they get the message. Bye. Charming sight to come home to. <laughs> oh, who wears pajamas these days, eh? <laughs> oh, um, we just missed a phone call. Someone called Angela. She's going to ring back. Thanks. Who's uh, who's she anyway? I was half asleep, but she sounded a bit spunky. I'll um unpack. David can tell you. Oh. Girlfriend, eh? No, she's my daughter. It's stupid. Think of the money you're gonna lose. It's not really any of your business, is it? You're an employee. It's up to Dad and me to make decisions like that. I didn't say it wasn't. A lot of people are gonna be cheesed off if you cancel their courses. We'll explain we've got problems. Fit them in later. We What's have... going on? Uh, John's sticking his bib in where it's not wanted, that's all. That's enough. What's the problem? No problem. Wayne reckons we should... He reckons you should hold off the opening until the indoor arena's finished. There'll be at least a two-week delay on those materials. I don't see why we have to. We can still have the classes without the indoor arena. The sort of people we're attracting won't want to see a half-finished setup. First impressions count. When Patricia and I were here, the idea seemed to be to open as soon as possible. Well, that was then. Wayne. Wayne's right. Thanks for the concern, though. Fair enough. I'll get back to work. I agree with John. She would. There's no need to be quite so unpleasant. Just letting him know where he stands, that's all. Well, I must be going. Do you mind if I call a cab? Oh, don't be silly. I'll drive you. I can call into the stud on the way back and ask Ellen about the job. Won't be long. I'll just bring the car around. I hope this is the last time we'll have to see each other. I couldn't agree more. Don't think I'd have ever helped you if it hadn't been for David's involvement. Oh, it never crossed my mind. I learned my lesson with James. I've been waiting for you to bring that up. I'm surprised you held out for so long. It never seemed appropriate before. I don't see that it is now. Are James and David the only two? Or do you make a habit of breaking up relationships? None of your damn business. James loved me. It's more than he ever felt for you, he told me. I gather you've never told Gordon about him, either. I thought so. Are you threatening me? No. No, that's your affair. 
Unless, of course, you ever do anything to hurt the Palmers. Oh, I wouldn't put it past you. I couldn't care less about David anymore. Good. Then I'll never have to tell anyone about how you got Gordon his start in business. Will I? Tonight, funny man Steve Martin takes fatherly love to a whole new level as he tries to hang on to his daughter, his money and his mind. And Martin Short's the wedding coordinator who's going to make sure he loses all three. For the first time in high definition, the fairy tale family favourite, Father of the Bride, 8.30 tonight on 7. Coming up next, Crumbs. Tears and sadness. 